Hey, Tim Robles, Miss Robolino, Miss Robolino coming in for another lesson at home. So I want to go ahead and take the opportunity to go over federalism with you. So as of right now, we have finished three principles, limited government, separation of powers, checks and balances. And now we're looking at federalism. So federalism can be a little fishy and it can be a little hard if you uh, are unfamiliar with it. So I do wanna take the time to go over this and make sure you have a good understanding. So taking a look at this picture on the, on the screen, you can see that federalism is some kind of partnership between the national government, which is also known as federal, and the state government. Throughout history, we have always seen that the states have always looked to have state rights, and it's always been this way. We have seen this throughout all of our courses, specifically in the Civil War. State rights are still there, but we do see that we have a strong federal government to make sure that all the rights of the people, no matter what state are in, are still protected by the Constitution. So let's go ahead and let's define federalism. So, Federalism is a division of power between the federal government, the state government, and the local governments. Okay, an example of this would be federal government regulates trade across state borders. Basically what that means is each state has their own GDP, gross domestic product, and each state is able to go ahead and make money off this, such as doing this with taxes um, and looking at what they can go ahead and trade with other states, along with looking at other countries. So Texas has a lot of things they can offer. They have agriculture, they have um, oil and gas, they also have um, technology-based, and so on and so forth. Whereas you find it differs with every single state. Alaska being a, a different state where it's very big on fishing, um, seems to be their major GD, GDP. And then looking at New York, California, and um, other areas in New England, we find that they're not going to be big on agriculture, but they will be big on like business um, and trading. Uh, stock market, anything like that. So we're going to see how each state in this end is going to be able to go ahead and protect themselves in a government. And that's where federalism comes in. So let's go ahead and let's get started on our journey. So federalism is, again, a partnership between the federal or the national government and the state government. We're going to see that there are things. Right now, what I would like you to do, and I'm gonna stop my share really quick, is I would like you to grab your foldable, and for those of you who are KVA, please look at your uh, virtual ISN and look at this slide number. And again, it may differ for everyone. You're going to look at slide 10, okay? So you're going to complete slide 10 or slide nine in your virtual ISN. So we're gonna open this up and we're going to look at the Venn diagram, this is what we're gonna be filling out today. So just so you know where we are, the Venn diagram, okay? If you do not have one of these, just know that you are, I do have extra in class, or you can go ahead and download the virtual ISN as well. So let's go ahead and let's bring that share back up. So some things that we're going to see that is only unique to the federal government. The federal government can declare war, okay? They can also admit new states. For example, we started off as 13 colonies, which were 13 states. And little by little through Manifest Destiny, we have gained states going through and through. And we have seen this specifically in the Civil War unit um, with many states coming in, whether they be slave states or free states. So again, uh, territories have to apply for statehood. Um, another thing we could look at is once a, one, not too long ago, I want to say maybe like 10, 15 years ago, um, there was, uh, or maybe a little bit longer, but there was an opportunity for us to take Puerto Rico 
on as a state because Puerto Rico really is just a territory for us. But we got to vote using our legislation and our government branches. And we got to vote to decide whether Puerto Rico should come in. And again, it was determined by Puerto Rico. Um, so these are just some interesting things to think of. We could have been 51 states. Very cool. So they, we can admit new states. We can also regulate um, commerce, print money. Again, Texas doesn't have its own money. Neither do the other states. There is American money. So that is one thing that we have, just one type of money. Established post offices. Remember, mail is a federal job. It's a federal department. So go ahead and exchange mail. Okay, enter into treaties with foreign governments. So Texas cannot go to Mexico and set up a private treaty. That really goes against the constitution. Again, the constitution takes all and we are one country and we need to benefit all. Okay, so that would go against our constitution. Um, we also say, get to see maintain military, protect copyrights. So these are just for the federal. You do not need to write all these down, but I do suggest writing the, these particular ones down, declaring war, admitting new states, printing money, regulate interstate commerce, and maintain military. Those are the ones that are really important. The other ones are just what else we have. Um, I want to go over what's, what um, the states have. So states in this sense um, are really interesting because they can assume powers not given specifically to the national government. That seems really weird and I get it. So basically what that means is um, the states can do things that the federal government cannot do. Okay, and what those things could be would be like, for example, establishing schools and how what curriculum they learn. Um, think about it. This class, Texas history. Do you think Florida is learning about Texas history like we are? California, do you think they're learning about Texas history? So these are things I want you to think about being able to um, implement your own curriculum and decide how schools work. For example, um, in Texas, we get out in May. Um, whereas up north where I used to teach in Connecticut, we didn't get out until sometimes the end of June. Can you imagine how that is? Now you need to remember each state is different um, geographically, obviously, and also how they how they work. So in Connecticut, um, you know, there's snow days, there's a lot of inclement weather, so they extend those dates. Um, and there's a lot more into it, but just to kind of explain um, that each state is very different. Okay, next we see the, um, the, they can ratify amendments to the constitution, looking at their constitution, okay, ratify their constitution. Each state has a constitution that is meant to protect the people. But again, remember the federal constitution, which is our constitution with the Bill of Rights is there, it surpasses the state's constitution. Because remember the, the federal Supreme Court takes over all. Okay, um, they can issue marriage and driver's license. Um, when I applied to get married, I didn't apply to the federal government. I applied to my local city to go ahead and apply for a marriage license. Okay, to get a driver's license. I don't have an American driver's license. I have a Texas driver's license and there are different driver's license for every state and they all look different. Okay, we also see that these uh, states can establish local governments like counties. Uh, they can regulate state commerce, okay, how the states trade with one another. That does have to be regulated to make sure that the state can tax particular things to get money. And then they can set up schools. So we see that they do have different things that they can do, but there are also similarities. Taking a look at the green, we can see that between the federal and government, they share the, the idea of collecting taxes. So your parents right now, um, they pay federal taxes. Some states have state taxes, like for example, Connecticut, um, and I believe, not New York, but um, Rhode Island, and there's a few others where they collect state taxes. Um, they can create char uh, charter banks, borrow money, Okay, so for example, the states would borrow money from the federal government, whereas the federal government can borrow state uh, borrow money internationally. 
okay? They can maintain law and order, police force, rules, laws, okay? Um, and they can build highways, um, some examples. Uh, I-10, Interstate 10 is a federal highway, which means that highway is maintained by the federal government and it runs through the whole country. So I-10 runs from West Coast to East Coast. Whereas if you look at other uh, interstate like I-95, which runs from the North to the South in the East Coast. Um, here in Texas, we have specific roads that are uh, taken care of by the state, such as 99, the Beltway, also known as Route 8, and then you have your farm market roads. Um, so these are just some things I want you to think about as who maintains them, how do they pay them, and this is where the federal government comes in. All right, let's just give you a minute and breathe. It's a lot of information. So let me go ahead and try and explain it in another way, in case this was a little confusing. So federalism, again, is a partnership between the state, the local government, and the national government. In the end, the federal government has full power. So take a look at the pyramid on the side. You will see that the United States is on the top of the pyramid, which means they have last say in how it goes. Okay, for example, your parents have a say in how it goes. That's, those are their rules, and that's kind of how it is. The state government, okay, which would be something like us, like Texas, we would be below the federal government, and the state can do particular things that attain to them, as you see in the Venn diagram to your left. Now, in the state, they break up the state into different counties. For example, Fort Bend County. Katy is broken up into two counties, Harris County and Fort Bend County. And then of course we have the, the local and municipal areas or governments, which would be cities like Katy. And then underneath that, we would have the people and then the laws of nature. So let me go ahead and take a minute and explain that to you. Everything with the federal government trickles down. Basically what that means is the laws from the US trickle down all the way to us. But the United States has full control over everything below it. They can decide how things go. And that's where the constitution comes in. Next, we have the states. The states are not in control of the United States, but they do have representation inside of Congress to make sure that their state is protected um, and the people in their state are represented, represented, but we'll go over that later. So now you see that the state has full control over the counties and the local municipal groups. They decide how it goes. Now, the counties have control over the local governments and the municipal um, municipal governments. For example, when the pandemic happened and we had to learn from home, that was a state mandate. That was not done by the United States. The governor decided to go ahead and shut the state down and make everyone stay home. And we learned from home at that time. So that was a state mandate and it applied to everybody. Okay. Now, if we look at the county, for example, um, counties only have so much power that the state gives them. So the county cannot close down schools. That has to be something that the state has to uh, declare. But what they can do is they can go ahead and put mandates such as wearing a mask, which is what we have to do right now. And that trickles down all the way to the local and municipal governments. And those local and municipal governments are able to put law enforcement in there as well. Look at KDISD. We would be a municipal or a special district where we have our own police force and all we deal with is the school. That's it. We don't deal with anything else. We still are under the laws of the state and the county and the local government. So I hope that kind of explains federalism to you. But in the end of the day, it's a partnership, but federalism is the national government has the last say. Okay, so I would like to take a moment to kind of put it in words of federalism inside our school. Okay, think about school in general. Katie ISD is a district. We are a district that has rules and we have code of conducts. For example, in Katie ISD, um, there are specific rules that every school must follow. For example, schools have to be open five days a week 
unless they are holidays or the days are determined. Our school cannot say, we don't wanna to go to school on Fridays, so we're gonna shut it down. We can't do that. We have to follow the district guidelines. That trickles down. So if you think about the school system in that way. Next, we have our principal. Our principal is able to go ahead and decide specific uh, rules that need to be enforced like dress code. Dress code is decided by KDISD and that dress code is applied to all schools inside the district. Whereas here we can go ahead and decide other particular things such as what we want to com commemorate, what we want to use like respect the pack that is not going to be used in Beckendorf or West Memorial Junior High. They have their own so we're able to do specific things. Now just remember this school system is very similar to what federalism would look like. KDISD would be the last say. They, the district has the last say. They decide what's going to happen. And then from there, you have your school principals. And then underneath the school principals are your APs, then your teachers and your counselors, and then the students. Okay. And that's kind of where it goes. It trickles down. I hope that, um, helps clarify a few things. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. Um, what I would like you to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to stop my share and I wanna show you this. On the back of your paper, I would like you to draw this. I would like you to draw a pyramid, okay? And when you draw your pyramid, I want you to draw one, two, three lines on your pyramid. And then the last line, just split it into two, like so, okay? Draw this. Okay, for those of you who are KVA, you are going to use, I believe, slide eight. Okay, here, I would like you to make a chart. And your chart, what you're going to do is you're going to draw one, two, three lines. And that what that's going to do is you're going to be able to have one, two, three lines drawing horizontally. That will create one, two, three, four columns, and one, two, three rows, okay? So work on that right now. Take the opportunity to go ahead and pause me if you need to pause. What you're going to do is you are going to label these um, as I kind of go through the lecture, but first we need to go ahead and set up our chart. You are going to label the top part, okay, of the rows, county government, municipal government, and special districts, okay? Here, you're going to put on top, below government, you're gonna write government, because that goes for here. Those are the types of government. And then here, you are going to write structure, okay? So you're going to write structure. Then you will write function. And then we're going to go through each one, filling it out, and I will do this with you. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get started. I'll put my share back on. There we go. Okay. So taking a look right here on our pyramid, I want you to recreate federalism. So on the pyramid that you created, just like you see here, just write federalism. Okay, just like that. And then you're going to label each one. The top is going to be the people. Okay, then you're going to have the federal. Underneath the state. And then you're going to use county. Municipal. Okay, and special districts. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and let me stop my share so you can see. 
So just like this, I write the word federalism and then I put the people, federal, state, and then you have your county, municipal, and special districts, just like that. And here you have your structure and your function, okay? Now, let's go ahead and let's go over this and I will tell you what to write down. When we look at our pyramid, okay, this is a hierarchy, just like I explained before in checks and balances, the people are always gonna be on top because in the end of the day, the government is meant to do one thing, protect the people's rights, and that's the constitution. So the people are right here on top. Beneath them is the federal government, because if you remember, the federal government is to do one thing, protect the people's rights with the Constitution. So the people have the power to go ahead and decide on representatives in their state, their municipal government, their special districts, and their counties. So they go ahead and they have a say in how the federal government is going to run. So that's why the people are on top. Below is the federal government. And again, they are in charge of the states and the lower districts below, lower governments. So the federal government sets the laws, again, that are basically determined by the people who chose rep representatives, okay, to go ahead and represent them. And then that will trickle down to the states. The states have laws that they must follow, okay, but they also have their own rules that they can go ahead and trickle down to the county, the municipal, and the special districts. So again, it's just a trickle effect. It's a hierarchy. The people are on top because governments are meant to do one thing, protect the people and limit the governments. And then the federal government is meant to go ahead and be the law of the land on that part. So let's go take a look at the county. This is where we're going to be in our graph, our little chart that we created. So we're going to look at the county governments and we're going to see in Texas, we have 254 counties. That's a lot. And those counties are run by sheriffs. The functions of this, of these counties, are to take care of roads, recreational facilities, jails, property tax, vehicle registrations, regular voters, fire stations, county systems, and law enforcement. Okay? Go ahead and in your chart, write a couple of those down. So for the structure, write down 254 counties and the sheriff, and then just write two or three functions. The municipal government are going to be cities and towns, and those are gonna be controlled by mayors and city councils. Their functions are very similar to um, incorporated areas within a city. Same as a county, but only in incorporated areas. For example, the mayor of Houston. Okay, he has a say in how certain things are run. But again, the government, the governor is above him. And then above the governor is obviously the separation of powers, the three branches. Okay, then we look at special districts. Okay, these are going to be things like us, ISD, independent school districts, school district structure, head of a head by a superintendent, a school board, and the functions creates curriculum and hiring employees. So in the end, we are in our own individual special district, and that is KDISD, areas like Cyprus Fairbanks ISD, Klein ISD, Fort Bend ISD, all of those are special districts, and they control themselves to a point. Remember, they are below the municipal districts or the county districts, so they have to go by the laws that are set by them. Okay, so that is structure and function of local governments. So please make sure you go ahead and fill those out right here in the chart that you created. All right, feel free to pause if you need to finish that. Let's take a look at our next one. So we're gonna skip the brain teeth. And we're gonna look at this, structure and function of Texas education, just to show you how the special districts work. We have right now, um, the school district has to go ahead and adhere to the state um, education that is put forth by the governor, Texas Education Agency, the TEA. Okay, from there, they're part of um, two state executive branches, just like we showed when we went over the separation of powers 
inside of local and state governments. If you are, if you don't remember, go back to that video and watch it. So the TEA is looking and they're in control of the State Board of Education who are elected and create laws regarding the teacher certification. I need to take a test to go ahead and be able to go ahead and teach. What students should know? The TEKS. What is the curriculum? And of course, testing students' knowledge with a star. This is what the Texas Edu Education Agency does. This is what they do. Special districts, as we said before, have to adhere to the TEA, which is a state agency, okay? Then we can go ahead and take a look at how it trickles down. TEA, Texas Education Industry, gives what they want to the school districts, like KDISD. KDISD um, gets those information and the superintendent has to go ahead and adhere to those and implement them to the district assistants. The district assistants then give it to the principals and the principals go ahead and give the information to the teachers, which is me. Again, a hierarchy, that is federalism. It is a hierarchy where everything trickles down, okay? So, looking at this, our superintendent, our school board, these are elected officials by the people. So again, the people have control. The superintendent is hired by the school board who was elected by the people. So again, our representatives who select who's going to go ahead and run the school district. Texas education is funded, okay, one way, and that's going to be through bonds and taxes. So school districts write bonds, which is basically a proposal um, that will be up for election, which is voted by the people inside of KDISD. Your parents, me, if I live in Katy. It looks at new schools, buses, renovations, technology upgrades, and so on and so forth. Okay, and this has to be approved. They have to go ahead and give the amount that they would like and what they need, and it is approved by the people and the school board. So looking at this, we see that Texas itself, money has to go in order. You pay property taxes, which is what you pay for your school, um, with where you live, okay? And then you have to go ahead and um, the school district collects that. And then from there, they're able to go ahead and distribute the funds from there. So there is a fund that KDISD does tax to people who own uh, houses inside of Katy, and it just tells you there's a school tax and that tax is there to go ahead and fund the schools to be able to go ahead and have what we have here in Katy. So your parents and me who I live in Katy contribute to how Katy ISD is able to go ahead and, and run. So it's really important to understand that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so state funds. State funds are done certain ways. States get money in particular ways. One way is going to be through state tax, gasoline taxes, and fees. Okay, lottery proceeds. So the state gets these funds. And again, if you remember to the Venn diagram, you can see that states are allowed to tax just like the federal government is. So what are federal funds? Well, let me go ahead and explain that to you. Federal funds basically are the Federal Department of Education Okay, developed uh, shortly after the Civil War. It was along with other federal departments to go ahead and uh, fund state education agencies based on um, financial need. What that means is the state can go ahead and request specific money to help them implement their education systems. Funds are for free and reduced lunches, technology, education for students with disabilities, bilingual education, 
and economically disadvantaged students. Again, the states have to go ahead and uh, request this in writing and be able to go ahead and provide that information. And then the state will get those funds from the federal government and then disperse them to the schools. Again, all that qualify. Okay, so bonds, bond issues in that state. Okay, so just as I explained before, how schools get their money. And then Texas funding in general. So Texas gets its money many ways. Property tax, sales tax, and fees. Property tax comes from the property. And me, I am a house owner, just like many of your parents may be, have to pay a tax for that. Okay, that gets distributed to the particular government and local governments to go ahead and run, to be able to do things like fix roads and be able to go ahead and pay public officials. Sales tax, a tax on certain goods and services. Fees, fees are used, for example, uh, to go ahead and run the department, just like um, your driver's license or permits or the education for me to go ahead and apply for my teacher certification. Those fees are meant to go ahead and run that particular agency from the state. So it is not um, coming out of anyone's pocket. It comes from the people who are applying. So it runs. It's actually a really beautiful system and I, I think it works great. Other states, um, for example, I was in Connecticut, had a very, very large uh, fee for driver's license. You had to pay $70. Um, it was really expensive. So um, here in Texas, it's like 20 or 30 and I am so happy. <laughs> now, federalism. I'm gonna go ahead and move things. Click on the job to reveal the answer. So I wanna know, setting speed limits, do you think that's federal, local, or state? Speed limits. It could be multiple. Well, that is going to be state, local, and state. How about coining money, making money? What would that be? That would be federal. How about sets teacher salaries? Mm, what would that be? Sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulties. That's right. That would be local and state because again, special districts. Okay, what about declaring war? Mm, can Texas declare war? No, that would go ahead and that would be a federal function. How about collects income tax? Hmm, what would that be? That's right, federal and state. Issues driver's license, what would that be? Good job, that would be state. Again, remember the fees that they charge. How about conducts elections? That's right, state and local government. Makes treaties, just federal, good job. How about maintains postal service? That would be just federal because it is a federal organization. What about issues parking tickets? Hmm. That's right, that would be state and local. The federal government is not gonna go ahead and get that. That is to run those agencies. What about ratifies amendments to the constitution? Good job, that is just state. How about set age limits on alcohol? That would be a state function. Let set citizenship requirements, that would be federal. Train fighters, I mean, trained firefighters, that would be state and local. Issues building permits, that would be local. Regulates garbage collection, that would be state and local. Here's barking, um, he, um, here's barking dog complaints, that would be local. Issues professional licenses, that would be state and then maintains interstate highways, that would be federal, OK? 
okay? So again, go through, see if you can test yourself without uh, going uh, in and you can kind of see uh, what's there to look at the responsibilities of what, of what is federal, local government or state. Okay, so here is a chart that you will uh, have um, for you. I wanted you to have this. So it explains the difference. So here are the federal government separation of powers and here's federalism. It is a vertical line. So at the federal level, this is kind of how it works. Federal's on top because they rule. Local level is on the bottom because again, they're controlled by the state. And then separation of powers is a horizontal line because you look at kind of who's in control. Um, it is more like equal. So when you see the line, you think more equal, keeping things balanced. Federalism is all about trickling down. So that's why we have a vertical line. And separation of powers is all about keeping things equal. So no one is above one another, whereas federalism, it is. All right, guys, that is really all I have for you today. When you come in, we are going to be working on a small little assignment. Um, if you do have questions, again, reach out to me and I will be here for you. Um, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.